So now with some lime yellow and touch of green on my filbert brush, open up the bristles and let's come right over here. Just drop it in. Creates a lot of texture of leaves and stuff. Okay, and you can group these trees like this is one tree, this is another tree like that. And let's come right over here on this and tap it. Just creating some shape to the land. You turn the brush. That it's that easy. And I want those dogs to be shown. Hmm. So now I've just brightened up that color a bit. Let's come right over here, you know, just drop it in. And I'm tapping it very lightly. Okay, something like that. You can create a lot of depth. And this will be the boundary for this tree. Always have a reference picture. Okay, something like that. Look at that, I was super loose with the blocking in part, but when it comes to detailing, I'm very careful. Hmm. Just sort of brightening them up. Hmm. So now I've brightened it up for another layer. So that barely touching the surface. Open up the bristles. Of course, this is a worn out brush. Okay, something like that, you know. Create some random shapes of each individual foreground tree. Yeah. I'll just change the color a bit. And I'll just brighten it up for the sake of adding depth. I'll even make use of a fan brush. I'll just take up that color. I'll just take up that color of green mixed with blue with that all sorts of variations are very important to make it look realistic and natural along with the brush strokes look at that so now with some blue mixed to that same color let's go right over here and just drop in another tree Okay, something like that and tap it very lightly. The reason you have to tap it lightly is because you want all those pockets of the blocked in colors. Okay, something like that. Hmm. So now with some black on my number two fan brush. Took off most of the paint from the brush. To get that texture hmm look at that that creates multiple effects at the same time and I'll go to the bottom and just you know drop in some shadows for these trees and start off from the bottom and go towards the top that will be easier for you Okay, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, I like those extra leaves popping out. Just mushing it on the watercolor paper. Hmm. So now I've just taken in more of black and just tapped it once on the palette to reduce the amount of paint on the brush same number two fan brush again now i want some more depth and make them look deeper because that's something like that i don't overdo things hmm can it be darker there too
now it's some more black let's come right over here and drop in some more textures to make them look realistic this is a super effective method to make your paintings look realistic don't add too much detail when they are far and we don't add this detailing when they are in the foreground something like that hmm. now just take it in some black and wipe it off very lightly even though I know I have wiped it off but still very lightly I will just go over here and add in some shadows to this Okay, something like that using the number two fan brush so now with the mid-tone gray color let's come right over here and drop in some textures and something like that there might be there in the mid crown hmm. and just a tap or two on these far off cliffs so the meanwhile let's go right over here and just drop in some mossy areas okay something like that and yeah and some over here too don't want to lose all those contrast Let's go right over here and just drop in something like that, a small waterfall. Make the background a bit soft, just like that. Hmm. And we need some ripples to depict that reflection of the waterfall. I'll just do it like that be very careful especially when you're painting with watercolors or acrylics even it's tacky if you try to rub the paint might simply come off so do it very slowly and very gently Hmm, just trying to blend them so now I've dipped my brush in water let's go ahead and blend them together with that just like that Now let's go ahead and drop in a few tree trunks, small tree trunks. Sips and spots and there he goes. And maybe another one. And let's go back into the water. Just drop that in. Just like that or there. Just give it a slight. Do it like that. Hmm. Maybe another one sneaks off right over here. Just bring that point over there and then you know, just do it like that. You know, that creates instant reflections. Maybe another one's gonna come off there. Hmm. Now I'll bring out the darks in the water. Because that's gonna come off till there and then. something like that and I like that brownish cast over there let's go over it very lightly once and let's go back over here and start blending these two together
and pick out that white from there and bring it outwards and let's go ahead and drop in few over here too we want them to be symmetric okay something like that and then we'll have another one and sneak in the one slightly okay i don't want anything to be symmetric and so now let's bring in few twigs into the painting okay, let me turn the watercolor paper like that i'm using the rigor brush for this whether well, that pushes things back if not anything else it pushes the sky back hmm overlapping strokes of the twigs will definitely help uh, that keep it as light as possible you can always go back and darken them I'll continue with that so now without cleaning the brush I just wanted some white well i know i have to work on a very small area so i just did not clean my brush I just like that over there and pull it make them softer because they're not in the foreground they're somewhere far okay, something like that and some wood there too hmm. Now without cleaning the brush, I just wanted some grayish brown black color. Just do it like that and then maybe if you want to load something like that, you know. Just to create some sort of interest. Just reflect that stone, which is holding up the waterfall for us. So with this. I come to the end of this painting. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.